there are three of these crossings all manned between Mortbull and Braunton. A simple locking system prevents the signals showing clear until the gates have been opened. But 40 trains a day working double track puts any system to the test and finds the weakness. That turned out to be the wicket gates, which had no locks. Half a mile down at Hedden Mill, a child waited for an up train to steam by, ran through the wicket gate, straight into the path of the down express. Timetables for the crossing keepers never allowed for illness. His wife would take over his duties immediately, and those warning bells duplicated in the cabin and the cottage would have wakened the dead, let alone one busy housewife. Braunton, a stop for the beach parties for Saunton and Croyd, a yard full of buses, once pony and trap, and the best railway hydrangea, a whole platform long. Well, that was in the days when the staff numbered eight, not two on a shift, and local industries overworked the goods yard. The bulb farm sent a thousand baskets a day, sugar beet, pottery, rabbits up to three tons a day, and there were very special occasions when children lined the fences at a safe distance to see their own rodeo show, loading prize cattle for the Bath and West or Devon County shows. station foreman could remember only one accident. An elderly woman used those faulty wicket gates to cross behind a shunting train, was knocked down and lost an arm. During the war there was a large American army camp nearby, so evening trains had plenty of customers. The late special, fondly dubbed the Braunton Boozer, left Barnstable at 10.30 full and bursting, with a clientele feeling uh, much the same way. Seating problems drifted into luggage racks, even down to the buffers, and the train would stop half a dozen times to the alarm chain being pulled, in mistake for something else, no doubt. All right, so it's just another branch line closing down, but it's closing down people too. 40 years of a man's career, Porter, guard, station master. It's closing down a bit of history. Four years of slog with pick and shovel, cutting that road up through the bank, making a mountain top at Coombe. It's closing down nearly a century of steamers, whistling up through the valley, pushing through fog on a winter's night, still on time, or coming through the dawn two hours late from a bombing raid at Waterloo.
there's still the ghost of a railway up through the strand, a remnant of town station with car parks smothering the old road from Paddington or Waterloo. But you can trace out its track over the River Yeo with the old swing bridge once snared a catch on the incoming flood, the only instance where timetables had to wait on the tides. And for years, Braunton Station was left to bleach in summer suns, and the bones buried themselves deeper into the greenery, until winter came to stir dead leaves into a frenzy as though long dead trains had passed. But the house at Henton, no longer a residence for the lord of the manor, is humbled as a country club, although it still survives. And below it, a gradient cross marks where the railway died. <laughs>